a little news coming out here with crypto. You know, over the last week, actually, a uh, couple of weeks, it's been rumored. But really now at this point, it's been all but confirmed. So if anyone's familiar with what's called the Terra blockchain, uh, Terra is otherwise known as Luna, you know, an abbreviation. So you know, if anyone's known of the Luna coin, well, it's on Terra blockchain. So with that, the founder of Terra, his name's uh, Du Kwan, a Korean gentleman. But he ended up hinting last week, two weeks ago, at a huge purchase to, to back up the blockchain, to back up Terra blockchain by purchasing $3 billion worth of Bitcoin. Now, this was rumored two weeks ago. So I didn't want to make a big fuss about it at the time. I read, up, or I read up about it the second the rumor came out, but I didn't want to say much about the rumor because, you know, hey, I don't know if it's true or not. We don't know if it's going to happen, when it will happen, but it happened. So what I don't have on me right now prepared, at least, unfortunately, you could actually check out the wallet that Duquan and Terra as a whole uh, are using to accumulate this Bitcoin with. It's crazy. Well, what I did mention to you folks, and this was back uh, two Fridays ago, so not this past Friday, but from the Friday before on March 18th, you can go back to the afternoon meeting. We actually clipped off that video uh, regarding Bitcoin at the time. I ended up showing a leveraged long position that I took on Bitcoin. And I got in under 40,000 at 39.7 at the time it was. It's for about 1.93 Bitcoin leveraged in at. So from there, it was off to a good start. Well, this here is the 30-minute chart of Bitcoin. This is actually on the uh, exchange Bitfinex, which is a really important exchange in regards to leveraged trading. You get the bigger, uh, you know, whales out there, so to say, you know, trading on Bitfinex. Well, really, this is just from last night heading into the morning here today. I mean, you know, over the weekend, we ended up seeing a huge rally on Bitcoin. And, you know, my belief is that it's based off of Duquan's purchase. And he's continuing to buy Bitcoin for the Terra blockchain over the next, I think, month and a half, even it is, if not more. So with that, we ended up seeing a really nice squeeze on Bitcoin, not only since the time that I told you about my position from 39.7, but even over the weekend, huge pop right over 45,000 to the point where we're getting a lot closer uh, or to the point where we're getting closer to that 49,000 target that I gave you folks. We're getting there a lot sooner than I thought we would be getting there at, which is pretty interesting. So I want to show you two things here on this heat map, maybe more. I don't know. We'll see how much time we got. But, you know, first and foremost, this is the Bitfinex exchange. This will look really like clumpy up in a you know second here. So my apologies. But this is pretty interesting. So over the last, I don't know, like three and a half days, four days, this works just like book map, you know, level four that we use for stocks. So you could basically see Bitcoin's action here going on up. And any of the darker lines that stretch across are big sell orders. Any of these are big buy orders below it. What the hell happens here? <laughs> if you look at all of this right here, at first we ended up seeing like a giant wall of resistance pop up on the Bitfinex exchange here from 45,000 up towards just about 48. So that clearly tells me that someone is trying to scale out of a big position that they're in. So I ended up going back on Bitfinex and take a look at this. Pretty similar order flow. This is back from late February. I never noticed this until like the last few days, which is pretty cool. We ended up seeing the, this buyer, you know, just a stack of big orders on the bid, you know, probably for around anywhere of 25 to 50 Bitcoin per price level. But it ended up crashing into that, into that liquidity, meaning that, you know, whoever was looking to buy there bought it. Well, look what happens. It ended up supporting the move altogether. It bounced back up. Whoever bought there is looking like a freaking wizard, a genius. And now at this point, well, at first, we ended up seeing you know, a stack of orders pop up on the ask. That's going to be resistance. That could be the same buyer that ended up loading up here, roughly around 35,000 to 39,000 or 37,000, that is. So you know, just be mindful of this right now. But even over the last day and a half, two days, 
as I zoom in, probably another water break here. Been a long day of talking. My apologies on that. But you could see at least at this point over the last day and a half, well, very similar to this stack of volume on the ask, you know, sell orders. We have a stack of volume on the bid. We have a big fight here right now between the bulls and the bears. To be transparent, it's not exactly much of a fight so far. You know, as soon as this volume stacked up on the bid here, well, we ended up getting a big pop. So a lot of this volume's already been filled. The question is, does it continue? Does it continue to squeeze past this liquidity? Does Bitcoin not really care for that seller? Or does that seller know something about the future move of Bitcoin that most don't? That's what we're going to have to react towards over the next, you know, week, week and a half, two weeks. Skip here inside our live trading room as we do this live stream right now. It says, let it ride. Skip, I agree with you. Personally, I agree with you. But that's only a prediction. That's only a guess. Let's see what happens here right now because I want to show you just, you know, here's the Bitcoin daily chart. But a couple of things with this. And I, you know, hey, with Bitcoin and swing trading in particular, I am more on the tech analysis side of things. So one thing that I definitely have been following over the last like month or so, month and a half, not even as much of a FIB retracement or extension, which I love to do at times. But a fib channel, th th this is really cool to see, folks. Watch this. So for a fib channel, you have to kind of connect two strong swing bottoms. And then really you connect it afterwards to a swing top. Now, where I'm going with this is that if we kind of take a look at Bitcoin's future movement. I'm going to make this... Uh, pretty transparent. It'll be easier to see. So you could see essentially it blasted right through this line right here. The 38.2% FIB retracement or FIB channel line, we'll call it, blasted right over that over the last day, two days. What's our next FIB level? Right here, the 50% channel line, we'll call it. So that would be a pretty interesting point of resistance. Otherwise, I was calling out 49 or so thousand as a local top because more of like an EMA crossover thing. Right over here, you could see where ultimately, I believe that's the 200 and 500 EMAs cross. There's also another cross here between the two and 500, another one here. So these tend to be technical levels oftentimes. So between that, Along with now this, I think that is a really interesting resistance to follow over the next, we'll call it two to four weeks. How about that? 